That's amazing. I don't, I didn't know that about you. What do, what do you know? That you're a musician. But that's why I'm interviewing you today, so I can get to know you. So I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. What the fuck that mean? Make magic or something? What is musician? I think that's, I think you're confusing that. Yeah, I'm not no musician. I, I make music. I make I, music, I, and that's not all I do. I make music, I act. I'm a TV star, too, a young mom. Uh -huh. I Just really quick, I think you're confusing. I'm not confusing nothing, because I, you, you don't know. I, you thought that all I was was a magician, or whatever the fuck you said. See, that's what I think you think I said. No, I said musician, I think, not what, magician. I don't think, baby, but, I don't think. What I, is that? That's ghetto. I don't think. I know. So you, you think. I didn't say magician, Suki. I said musician. And I think you are a musician. No, baby, I do music. So you, just really, just really quick, for the record, could you say you don't think you're a musician? I'm not none of that. But then after that, you just said, I do music. Yeah, I do music. So, in other yeah. words, you're a musician. No, I'm not. Okay. Don't you know that God, 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 God is so concerned about you? I have, I have seen that before. Yeah. That's, um, what's her name? Ooh, man, I don't know. Suki Hana, I think her name is Suki, Suki Hana. Hana. Suki Hana, yes. She's a, 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 a female artist. She's a musician. <laughs> She's a, so, well. Which one? The one that's saying well, she's not a musician? Yes, the okay. one saying she's not a musician. Yeah, uh-huh. She so, you know, yeah, she's a musician. <laughs> but what she—that's like a lost in translation moment, you know, because she's saying to the interviewer, "Don't try to pin me down, right?" Mm -hmm. As one yeah. thing, and for some reason, she heard the word. I guess it was magician. Magician, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why she thought that the other girl would try to typecast her as a magician. I don't know if that has something to do. Does she have uh, a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors in her performances? I don't know anything about her background. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't listen. I don't listen to her music. So, yeah, I don't. So I don't know if, they, if she was trying to react to the idea, like, I know I'm not just a, like, so what are you, are you basically equating me to like a circus clown? I think, I think that's, the, yeah, I think that's the way she took that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't say for sure, but I mean, I think in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a <laughs> I don't know if that was a hot take or what, but in a scenario like that, right. It, it, <clears throat> Maybe maybe there are underlying things that are that are that are at play with that conversation, yeah. right? So think about it, right? She's a black woman talking to a black talking to a white woman, a young white woman talking to a young black woman. Maybe the young black woman thinks the young black white woman is trying to, you know, make fun of her or make her look stupid or make her look well, she's in a state of super defensiveness probably about what she's going to say to her. Right. Yeah. Maybe I, you know, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't like to analyze yeah. these kind of things, but I can, I can say that it certainly, it certainly gives, you know, get, uh, seems like it was getting a little more, uh, she was getting a little more defensive about her, 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 <laughs> her calling. Yeah. <laughs> but it seemed like that's, that's, a, that's a great a, example you, of mimetic you, escalation you, happening because it's what, what starts off as a banal gesture of yeah. trying to understand who the other person is becomes, yeah. re it re is received as a slight mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's it, the, and then why they, is that? Though? Then she doubles down on that, right? She doesn't want to hear yeah. it, and then she tries to say, "But I think," and she says, "Look, honey, I don't think," yeah. which is so ironic, right? Because the audience is thinking, like, you don't That's know what the, the word problem. musician means. You don't think, <laughs> but then there's another side to it that I saw, which was like, dude, she's quoting Carl Jung right now. Mm -hmm. When Carl Jung says, you know, he's a mystic, and he's mm -hmm. saying. You know, he may be wrong on some things, but he's no dummy. He's pretty smart. And Carl Jung mm -hmm. says that famous line, 
I don't believe in God. I know him. Mm-hmm. And that's what this guy, this girl says. She says, honey, I don't think that's ghetto. I know. You know, so I don't yeah. know if yeah. she was going for that existential kind of thing that Carl Young's doing there. Yeah. But it's certain what I'm trying to say is sometimes something looks foolish on one level, but there's actually a truth to it that this idea of knowing versus thinking. Yeah, like epistemologically or something. I mean, I mean, okay. Knowing as in like you don't have to rationally know something. It's in your being. You feel it. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. And I think that's what Carl Jung's talking about. Is like I don't I don't believe in God in some kind of mental ascent. I yeah. know him. I experientially know him through it. Like, you know, through relationship, right? Yeah. I don't know if that's like what she was trying to do there in that moment by saying, I don't think I know. Or if maybe she was just trying to say, look, I'm beyond thinking. I'm just so confident. I just know what I know. You know, I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or it could have, or it could have just simply been that she thought she was trying to say something, uh, you know, under, under, undercut. And she mistook it for something else. And she was, you know, just standing her ground saying that I know what I am. I'm not a magician. <laughs> I'm a, I'm an artist. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, I, 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 I you know, Hey man, I, I, you know, I don't think we have to really, I don't think we have to try. It, well, Here's what I here's what I think you just did. I think you just tried to make the case for what she was. You were trying to do a do a do a do a uh, 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 you know maybe some kind of some kind of apologetic or something. I don't know. You know what I mean to try to to try to to try to get people to understand what she was really saying. I think she this this is what I told Shane. I shared this with Shane. I said. Maybe this is a publicity thing. Maybe maybe she knows that already, and I'm sh- and and so and so 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 I'm still going along with you. Like I'm gonna try to make a make an apologetic here now, right? Um, maybe it could be that she was told to act that way, right? Maybe she was prompted to say those things because it's profitable to look like a ignorant you know woman who doesn't know the difference between magician and musician and doesn't know that musician is actually a word that exists for what she might consider herself Mm -hmm. now i don't know if she plays music i don't know if she can read music i don't know if she makes beats or what have you but even you know, it's kind of like, okay, one could ask themselves, one could beg the question, are you really even a musician? Yeah. Well, that's, I think maybe, you know, if you wanted to be, again, I don't know anything about the thing and and I'm not, when I, when I'm saying my analysis, I'm kind of doing a little bit of a postmodern type move where I'm just kind of Mm -hmm. reinterpreting it the way I want it, you know, Mm -hmm. not Mm -hmm. necessarily the intention of the author, but I'm just subjectively reinterpreting it based on, my lived experience as they would say in the left. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, so I know about Carl Jung saying, I don't think I know. Mm -hmm. And then I connect that and I'm like, well, maybe she's stumbling around in the dark on something good. She needs to double down on what that means more. Even, even in her ignorance, she hits the truth on accident. You know, it's like feeling around the dark and you feel something, you don't know what it is and you kind of randomly grab onto the truth. But, um, I think maybe on the other on the like artist level, you know, it's become fashionable. People like Kanye West do not like being called a rapper. Remember, he said, I am not a rapper. I am a businessman. I'm an inventor like Nikola Tesla, which I haven't seen those inventions yet. But, you know, I'm sure he's working on them. But, you know, I, I, I'm i an inventor. Uh, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a fashion mogul, all this stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't want to be called just a rapper, right? And one of the reasons why a lot of them don't like that title is because they get such a sorry deal uh, mm-hmm. uh, with their record deal signs. They sign these line these long contracts when they've got no mm-hmm. money. Mm-hmm. Someone hands them a book that's the size mm-hmm. of an encyclopedia. That's their contract, you know. Mm-hmm. 
And at that point, they sometimes sign it without counsel or the counsel they have is basically giving them bad advice that this is the best you're going to get. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. he wants to get his cut of the deal too. So mm-hmm. they get real irritated that they basically sign the right to their masters and all this stuff mm-hmm. for life. And then, yeah, they make money, but they're in, they're basically under the dominion of these record companies and these touring. They got to constantly tour like, mm-hmm. like a circus act. Mm-hmm. never being home and mm-hmm. they have to sing the same song over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And all that stuff gets real old, real fast. The lifestyle, mm-hmm. the clingers, the fake friends, mm-hmm. the twisting of the moral contortions of your family that mm-hmm. manipulate you, even people's parents and stuff, selling them out for another movie or another song, you know, like you hear about with you know, children, celebrities. Mm-hmm. All of that, I think, goes into this concept that a lot of these guys and gals are trying to say, I don't want to be typecast as an artist because it's not really a source of power. They want to focus on the things they might have a little bit more ownership of, like their fashion line or something, you know? (laughs) Yeah, well, I also think that, you know, you you, you don't want to be sort of maybe typecast. Yeah. Right? So you don't want to be, like, labeled as this particular person that just is an entertainer. You know what I mean? He's just a jest- court jester. Yeah. I'm a business. You see what person. I'm saying? I'm an inventor. Yeah. yeah. You want to yeah. be, you know, you want to be, you want to be somebody that yeah. sounds like, sounds like the, their, their job description has yeah. substance. Yeah. Right. Has so a, lot of, a lot of young people who have little and middle class and poor situations, they look at a Kanye or that lady and their money and they say, man, they've mm-hmm. made it. But when mm-hmm. you get to that level, you look at all the, business executives and the billionaires Mm -hmm. or if you're really grandiose you look at the big icons of industry like edison and tesla and ford and Mm -hmm. all that and you say well now i want to be that that's what it means to make it and if Mm -hmm. i'm conceived of as just a rapper Mm -hmm. that feels like a court jester compared to Mm -hmm. thomas edison like wow icon living you know hero that changes the world those are titans so you're at the god level you want to get to the titan level you know what i mean yeah and 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 then and then there's the there's the whole problem there's probably the racial component you know in, incorporated into this right i mean uh, um you know you 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 want to you want to be seen as somebody who who made it you know what i mean that uh people tried to keep you down but you found a way to get out of that trap you know or that um uh, you know overcome <clears throat> certain stumbling blocks you know, whether it was put in front of you by someone else or you faced it, you know, you you brought you acted on your impulses and vices, you know, or, or not. But, you know, everyone would like to believe that they've, you know, overcome certain things and have 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 built up a certain life, you know, that um, that, that can be taken seriously. Right. And I think being an, being being sort of considered an artist especially, you know, if you're someone who has a family, you know, you want to be seen as a little more uh, astute and noble and, you know, um, having character and, 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 and telling people, you know, you're not going to go for this. And, you know, I'm not signing that contract. Like I know what I'm doing, you know, and I got other business ventures, like you said, you know, the fashion industry, and you know, whatever. And um, I, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, the question is, is like, is that, is, does that actually, are those things creative, right? Like is fashion really creative? Is music really creative? Is art really creative, right? These are all sort of aesthetic, maybe philosophical, I don't, maybe they're not philosophical questions, but anyways, it's just, I think people want to they you know people want to be taken seriously and perhaps a lot of a lot of a lot of people feel like hip hop and that art form is is still sort of stuck in a very adolescent or pubescent age you know what i mean like like a like a teenager you're still a teenager you know what i mean you still have vibrancy you're sort of rebellious you know, you don't, you know, you kind of told the line, you don't follow the rules. And um, I think that that's something that is, has its, has its um, 
benefits and shortcomings, you know, um, because that's what when you when you when you talk about being rebellious or towing the line, you know, sometimes you can get get somebody like, for instance, you know, Sukihana. Okay, like a rapper like that, you know what I mean? Who doesn't know the difference between a musician and a magician? Okay. And again, I'm not saying that she's, you know, I, I mean, I I I do wholeheartedly believe that that was probably something that was uh, what do you call it? Hoisted onto her. You know what I mean? That, that she, she probably knows the difference, but it, 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 it was good publicity. You know what I mean? If I act kind of retard, okay, sorry, not the right word. If I act a little ignorant, like, I don't know what, what you mean and stuff like that, then I can keep that sort of, you know, momentum going that I'm going to make a prediction. I think by 20, 2030, the rap and hip hop industry will be largely a relic of the past. Mm -hmm. uh, now, like, when did you kind of see like the rock and roll? You... Like, like there'll still be like there'll still be like, um, like perhaps like, um, you know, like nostalgic acts. You know how the Rolling yeah. Stones are still playing, but it's not like yeah. it's not setting the sound of the time. Like, yeah. I think the age, yeah. I think, you know, the age of rock, we thought rock would last forever and setting yeah. the sound of the time, yeah. but it's not. And yeah. in the same vein, I think that, you know, rap and hip hop, especially with all these icons turning out to be like creations of feds and stuff and all this stuff, mm -hmm. it really ruins the luster. It's like kind of like waking up yeah. as a kid that the Ninja Turtles in the movie were animatronics and not real yeah. giant turtles yeah like once you realize that your rapper outlaws are actually just like manufactured muppets that mm -hmm. are oftentimes completely manufactured like drake and mm -hmm. diddy and mm -hmm. uh the other guy uh now we're finding i mean good lord that i mean the difference in 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 uh what's the guy's name um the guy that uh, tupac you know the reality of what he you know like talked and sounded like and then what he was turned into as like a character mm -hmm. i mean this was all just as you know a stage is a character he was playing yeah you need to yeah, find I mean, that out kind of ruins it right it's not all raw and real now it's kind of manufactured and they're snitching on each other for the feds and honey yeah. pots and it just kind of ruins it you know <laughs> yeah the yeah i mean was a romantic you know it's, it's kind of gone there yeah yeah i mean i, I suppose you could say that with any you know genre that you know that, that it sort of had its era or something like that you know jazz was the same way right like the jazz artists and stuff like that you know really 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 i mean just great musicians you know what i'm saying and i'm not saying that like to be hyperbolistic and stuff like that i mean i you know i listen to jazz music i was just listening today to uh this guy named um i think his name is johnny little and he's a uh, um he's a xylophone a, a, you know plays marimba xylophone and stuff you know, great music, right? Uh, <laughs> Dizzy Gillespie, John Coltrane, you know, um, you know, even the Duke Ellington and Cab Calloway eras, you know, big band and stuff. Great musicians. They knew music. They knew how to read and write music. They act, they could understand, you know, how to, how to, you know, three fourths and all this type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Re just really could understand that language. Right. And, um, but you know, that era came to an end, right? People, but why? Because I think really a lot of these artists, you know, they they feel, they feel prey to a lot of what happens when, you know, I, I suppose a lot of artists become very popular, very big, you know, and stuff. And they get into a lot of things that they, you know, can't really control anymore and they feel like they can't control in their lives anymore you know, addictions, you know, that, that become traps for them and stuff like that. And uh, I think they just sort of, you know, fade out, um, sadly. And this, is, I think this is the same thing that we're seeing in the hip hop industry. It's just, it doesn't have any more luster because uh, there's so much scandal uh, behind it. You know what I mean? And you know, I mean, I'm not but it's saying not, it's not a romantic because scandal drives the whole thing. It was all about scandal. yeah, 
but I'm but saying it's not like the that, fun that kind was, of scandal. It's like, wait, you're yeah, in league with the yeah, principal. Yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. Yeah. You're in league with the man. See, the whole the whole point yeah. of hip hop's allure was that it was a rebellion mm -hmm. against the man. Mm -hmm. Once you find out that they're just pawns for the man in various mm -hmm. ways, mm -hmm. it ruins the entire point, right? Mm -hmm. and it's like, wait a sec, you're not Robin Hood. You're just a cheap wannabe ripoff that's designed to actually help predate us more. No, mm -hmm. I don't want that. Even mm -hmm. if it's just partially true, it mm -hmm. ruins the effect because the whole, in my opinion, that what, I mean, and maybe you have a different angle on it, but the whole, the whole appeal of the, of the, the gangster or the the outlaw or the one who makes his money and escapes dire poverty, right? Mm -hmm. Is a Christ haunted enterprise, of course. Mm -hmm. It is it Christ mm -hmm. is the ultimate outlaw. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh and the idea of being able to go from the bottom of the rung mm -hmm. societally with with so odd stacked against you, mm -hmm. making millions of dollars is this kind of Hyper fluidity up the hierarchy that's only yeah. possible in a Christian in infected world that allows for the fluidity of the hierarchy that doesn't make your fate sealed where you were born into, but yeah. allows you to go from the manger to the king of the world, right? Yeah, that's, but it, that's but it, Jesus's but it, story, and that is what draws the magnetic allure of the outlaw culture that hip hop and rap, you know, kind of pull, pull, pulled from. Of course. It's not purely that because yeah. Satan is an outlaw too, right? And that you're not yeah. the boss of me attitude is also mixed in. Yeah. But I would just say that probably Jesus is bigger impact than Satan because he's the king and Satan's defeated. So, well, I mean, yeah, that, I think that comes that, that, that sort of the, the, you know, the question of like, okay, yeah. Um, where, you know, you, you, it's like, you have to, you have to, you have to, you know, you have to sort of do the, the the black market thing in order to get out of the black market. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know that is the sort of <laughs> that's sort of the the hip hop culture. You know, it's like, well, I had to do, I had to do. You know, right? You know, I had to, I had to buy it. You know what I'm saying? But I that, but there's a there's a Christ Christ haunted nature to. It doesn't. What I'm saying is that there's the the aesthetic of the cross mm -hmm. in the prophetic tradition that it, it comes from, mm -hmm. of holding a mirror up to the corrupt ways of society that the Hebrew prophets did before Jesus, and Jesus did as well. Mm -hmm. And so when you say, "Well, I'm selling drugs," mm -hmm. it's with the notion that the establishment, the CIA, is shoving mm -hmm. drugs, with mm -hmm. the notion that the presidents are moving drugs. The Iran Contra was moving drugs with Reagan while he's telling you don't do drugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you you've got um, you've got that same dynamic going on when you want to look at the big pharma thing. You know, you mm -hmm. you you go to a hospital and you see your grandma loaded up with horrific, debilitating drugs, mm -hmm. and you say that's a kind of scam drug dealing kind of pushing. You may not mm -hmm. intellectually say it, you viscerally mm -hmm. feel it, and then when right. you go out and sell some drug recreationally and mm -hmm. you become rich and you don't have to be feeling completely helpless under that mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of unveiling of the absurd by being the absurd. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the, 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 these outlaw cultures, you know, well, I will be rich because I wanted to try to travel company, but that cost $20,000 in startup capital. I don't have that. I yeah. wanted to start a, hair salon, but that requires occupational licensure and all kinds yeah. of other things. Mm -hmm. and the rent's too high to get a building mm -hmm. and I could, so I could sell this instead. Yeah. You know, I wanted to yeah. go to church and have a family, but it was a corrupted church where the pastor was doing all kinds of ego maniacal thing. So I found yeah. a real family on the streets. Yeah. Right. You yeah. see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted it's, to it's, I it's, wanted yeah. to have a legit business, but I sold blue crab out of a cooler on the side of the highway because that yeah. was a better way to feed my family. Right? It's yeah. that Robin Hood vibe. That's Christian. Well, it's, That's a Christian inspired thing, even if it's yeah. mutated into sin and debauchery yeah. and addiction and depravity and ego. Well, I mean, it it's also its, it gets yeah. its zest. It gets its cultural appeal from Christ, mm. right? Well. 
I I I mean it 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 it, it I think the underlying foundation right there, of course, is wanting to be, you know, have 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 you know the hero have you know well to be a hero, but also to be you know to have money to have have security. Yeah. But uh, I think the I think the 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 um. Well, Abraham wanted to be rich too. He wasn't a gangster, but he probably acted yeah. like one compared to so, our so, standards today, right? Did Abraham yeah, so act like I'm, a gangster? Sorry. To yeah, I will. I mean, so what I'm saying is, yeah. I think that um, it could also be that the real desire is, you know, you 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 see people who are actually wealthy. You see people who are actually at a certain stage in life that, where you want to be, and you feel like the only means that you have to get there is to do is to is to do that you yeah, know what i mean cheat, to live the cheating system yeah that's so, what it's about you know, in it's, my it's, opinion it's, it's about it's, thumbing the, it's about saying this is a cheating system and i'm going to cheat it well yeah you want to cheat it and 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 but you also have mimetic desires yeah. you know what i mean it's it's a it's a you know this is what um you know you talk about hierarchy and everything right like in in the in the in the in the era before the revolution, before the you know, before the before the overthrowing of uh, European monarchs, right? In in, in in I'm just I'm trying to put it in the West, so I you know, but you could say this about any culture. Yeah. Uh, the the people who were lower than than the people who were on top, you know, wanted to be like the people who were who who were noble, who had money, who were aristocrats. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So they 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 want to mimic that same lifestyle and they want to mimic that same you know um culture and it's the same thing i think with you know you might say the hip-hop culture it's just a mirroring or a mimicking of the the what you you know the broader culture of its day that yeah. you know was around so like you know there was this um there was this hip-hop song i can't remember what it was but see I read, I, you know, hip hop wasn't popular on television. You see, what I'm saying back in the like 70s and, and early 80s, you know. So they were talking about how it it took this one female singer to sing along with a rapper to bring rap in the door to the popular world. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, it's like you had to fit in good with the with the with the with the Mate with the majority, you know what I mean, and that's that's. I think that was always sort of the thing with hip hop. It's like, okay, well, you're not gonna let us in. We're gonna do it ourselves. You know, if you're not gonna let us sit with the cool kids, we're gonna make a cool style and 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 genre and and whatever ourselves. You know where we're at and make 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 do with what we have and try to, you know, climb up the ranks and make this popular. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not the same. I don't think, you know, first of all, I think that, you know, we, we're living in a different age. It's so much easier to sort of put out your own, you know, art and put, you know, and then also to like probably get a record deal with anyone because all you have to do is just mumble and make weird sounds and you can be a rapper too. You see what I'm saying? The, the, the Maybe the authenticity that used to be there is no longer there because yeah. there's no real drive Right. behind hip hop. You see what I'm saying? Because all These of America really... <laughs> all of America is at a stage collectively most of America is at a stage where it's very tired and low confidence and low yeah. energy. Everybody's yes. tired, low confidence, low energy, needing mm -hmm. they need energy drinks. That's why energy drinks are so popular. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and they came and yeah. go to sleep. Um, right. But I but I, I think also it's also just the fact that you know the 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 art is just it doesn't tell, you know, they're not really telling stories anymore. They're not really like, you know, they used to talk about how rappers were like the modern day griots of West, you know, like in West Africa, or, you know, they were like the, the modern day, um, they used to do hey, this don't call thing. that, what's her name? Sukiyaki. Don't call her a griot. A Suki, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you her, man, call. You, that would be a viral video. If you said, now you're, you're kind of like a modern day griot. Can you imagine what she was <laughs> Yeah, don't I won't I won't call her. I won't I won't call her you agree Korea, Suki Hana, if you're listening to this. You, 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 you're an artist, okay? I'm not we're not gonna argue with Sukihana, okay? <laughs>
I'm too, t- I'm too tired, brother. I'm too tired <laughs> to go to that battle. I'm getting you know tired. But- we got we got we got all these uh topics we gotta cover still. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, you know, I know what you mean. I'm teasing. She you. seems she, yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not, not gonna, gonna fight jump through you. the screen at you. Hopefully. Yeah, I you know, yeah, yeah. So so but I think that the artistry is just not there either. You know, I mean, okay, these these rappers and stuff like that, you know, they 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 back in those days, I mean, you really had to make music. You know, you had yeah. to yeah. like get your get your whole setup. Well, you and had everything. to really you know, sample, you had to really sample some good music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, you know, and and, and, and do I mean something we creative with it, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were they were listening to like jazz beats and you know jazz music and using like cutting that and putting it in their raps there's a song i i forget uh you know but there's a lot of you know there's a lot of the tribe called quest you know all of them they they use those those sounds and those those samples in their music you know and, and sometimes it, it, it didn't make sense and but it was just it rhymed you know what i mean and stuff like that and the the, the the stuff that I'm and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to scapegoat, you know, because they're they're the same age as us, you know, these younger guys and women. They're the same age as us. They grew up in the same era we did. You know, um, so there's something about wanting to be wealthy o- over wanting to actually be an artist. I think that's at play here, you know, right now, right? Because it's like yeah, the older rappers and stuff, they, they wanted to be wealthy too. But they were also interested in, in the art that they were doing. You know, they 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 were taking it seriously. You know what I mean? And and, and they were really uh yeah. you know committed to that. Yeah. And I think a lot of the people that we're seeing today are just they're not as um they're not as committed to trying to yeah. make art, maybe you know. Yeah, as, that, as, kind of, as, that kind of leads me to the other topic I wanted to throw out there for you to think about is this, you know, this idea of why what makes a piece of media, especially like news and information media mm-hmm. uh, or a podcast, radio show, TV show, uh, streaming program, you know, even a magazine you know, social media posts, Mm -hmm. all of the ones that seem to be thriving financially. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of factors there, but one of the key ingredients I think I've come on to conclude is that the model that most of them tend to use is I give you information. Mm -hmm. And then in exchange, I give you an incarnational outlet by which to tangibly interact with me the program and feel like you've done something to uh, meet that information head on. Mm -hmm. So, and I say this in that way. So most shows like, and we talk about politics and culture today Mm -hmm. are very charged with negativity. We always say this, the news media is charged with negativity. I I saw somebody show me clips, Mm -hmm. how many recent programs have been talking about the latest disease that they're all mm-hmm. trying to worry about where it's going to spring to the animals and from the humans mm-hmm. and how our government has done a lot of work making sure they can get that thing to spread from animals to humans the next one mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. you see the news media pumping it like a pr firm every day every day hype 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 and then they go to an advertisement for a pharmaceutical drug and that's your mm-hmm. tangible and so what when we always know that Humans are incarnational. They're body and soul. They're mm-hmm. mind and they are uh, matter. They're uh, heaven and earth. And they're not distinctly in a dualistic sense, but in an intertwined sense, connecting, mm-hmm. colliding together. Mm-hmm. And they all need each other. You can't have a little bit of soul in a detached sense from the body. If you have a soul experience, it's going to come with an incarnational component. Mm-hmm. And I have always thought, you know, oh, man, you know, Isn't it nice I can do this show and not push products every five seconds? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because that's kind of ends up, a lot of people sell out because they get bad products that are not very good. Mm -hmm. 
and they use their voice to promote things in a kind of disingenuous way, promising things that can't be met. But at the same time, I think that the advertisement and the product that is offered to one's audience is a part of the experience of media. Mm -hmm. It is a necessary incarnational outlet and a discharge of the excitement that is stimulated by the mind. Mm -hmm. You watch something and they're like, tornado coming. You go to commercial break and they say, Popeye's got a deal. And you're like, well, tornado's coming. We still got time. We can call this order in. We have dinner ready because light's probably going to be electricity or something. You know what I'm saying? I made a yeah. funny one, but there's a lot yeah, of them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. You listen to Sean Hannity and then you go and, and he says, let me tell you why I buy gold. Yeah. yeah. You listen to Candace Owens and she says, buy my cup. You know, yeah. stand this uh, cup. Yeah. $75 or whatever it is. You know, you buy this giant cup. It's a tumbler. It's a yeah, tumbler, you David. Get to drink the same way I drink, you know, you get to use the same thing I use. You get that. That's communion. We long for communion. Yeah. And people who will get really trusting of these voices. Mm -hmm. That's why advertising is such a dubious industry because, again, people say you're selling your customers out for these dubious things. You're selling it out for, but yet, there's this paradox where people, if you ask the average Joe their opinion about content creators and their relationship to advertisers, they'll have a very low opinion overall, but not about their favorites, you know, and, yeah. but they'll say everybody is generally selling out their mouth to uh, make a buck. They're mm -hmm. grifters, mm -hmm. but yet there's a paradox because it's only the grifting shows that seem to succeed. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't put advertisement on this thing. I think I would probably have more of an incarnational discharge if yeah. I had a supplement that made sense or something like that. Every time yeah. I'm doing a show where I talk about the problem of the war, I talk about the problem of the economy, the culture. I talk mm -hmm. about the problem of violence. I talk about mm -hmm. the problem of diseases, all the things that I explore on this program. If I mm -hmm. had an incarnational discharge of that mental mm -hmm or spiritual energy that is experienced mm -hmm. into, well, buy this, mm -hmm. or even if it's a book. Mm -hmm. so it's got me thinking that I think that's actually how media content is designed for humans to enjoy. Yeah. Rightly yeah. or wrongly, ethically or not, it's the way it is. Yeah. The advertisement yeah. is not an imposition on top of the content. It is actually a critical component of the content's experience for the audience. Yeah. Well, just think, think about, think about, think about, okay, I don't know, how, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to try this and I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, you know, see if that makes sense. But just think about like, <clears throat> we're going to go anthropology here. Think about tribes and stuff like that. And they, and they, and they always got some kind of pilgrimage or something, you know what I mean? We, 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 you know, this month is the month of the sun God. And we are going to the temple to worship and praise and uh, jubilate and get, you know, euphoria and chanting and elevations and everything else. We're going to be sacrificing chickens there, and goats and lambs and bulls and smoke everywhere and incense. And it's going to go live. Right. So, what, OK, every time they do that, though, what what do people want when they leave? They want to take something with them. You know? It, like, a, you know, you go to that festival and it's like, well, man, don't you know, don't you want to take this fetish home with you? You know, this was a great pilgrimage today that we had. You know, right. this was a great sacrificial ceremony, ritual that we had today. So let's take this fetish and then, you know, we go home and we got the fetish at home and then we can put garlands on it and, you know, everything around the Sun Father's Day. You know, that's our patron god for the home. Or a relic, you know. Right? Yeah. yeah, our relic, you know what I mean? Our fetish. So it's the same thing. You know, you yeah. you, you you get in tune with, with a with a particular uh podcast or particular news yeah. site that you like or whatever, you know, you start buying hats because you want to yeah. let everybody know, you know, I watch things hidden, you know, I, yeah. I watch bright news, you know. I, I I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a serious Candace Owens fan, you know what I mean? I watch Tucker, you know, I watch Tucker Carlson every day, boy. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That's 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 how it is. You know what I mean? And yeah. so you you know, you do take on like certain certain things and you you know, sometimes you might even start acting like them without even knowing it. You know, you start dressing like them and 
you got to have the same demeanor and attitude. So, yes, I do. I do think that uh, part of the cultic incarnation, right? Yeah, it's it's you know what I'm saying, and it can be used in a good way to like glorify God, right? And to, to which just to, seems to be rarely done, and really, but yeah. you know, yeah, right. Or or if you look at something. CBS. You look at MSNBC, they got these ads for Raytheon. Raytheon doesn't need the money. They're money laundry. You know, they're running all these <laughs> yeah. ads. Raytheon loves America. And it's like, right. it's a way of paying off the outlet to keep selling the war propaganda. And it's really dirty and sleazy. Yeah. And then you go to like Rogan and he's selling you mushroom extract because he's going to have yeah. on a physicist or a right. woo-woo guy. And and, and, yeah. and you want to feel smart and you're on the cutting edge of yeah experience right and yeah, so you're like well yeah. i'll get that tea and that'll help me be a uh uh what's that word uh life hat yeah i'll be right like, life hat my way through life yeah this tea. yeah yeah that's the experience I'm, yeah it's a love-hate yeah, relationship you hate it insofar as an ad that doesn't land right in the incarnational vibe you know what i mean like yeah like if rogan yeah. sells something that you just like i don't that has nothing to do with the experience i want to get from your show right, right. kind of sell yeah. me yeah, but it's, that's it's, why we it, hate those ads, right? I mean, it's 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 the same, you know. It's the same. It's the same thing. Like you know, we were talking about Indian gurus and stuff. You know what I mean? You 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 remember them books called Osho? Oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, right. Everybody wanted, to, you know, the, what the guru talking about now? You know, what I'm saying the guru coming out. You know, now he 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 done gone. He done, you know, whatever happened to him. Yeah, I don't. The know. Government really went after him hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but here's another one. Now we got Sad Guru, oh. right? This new guy. Who, you know, yeah. and I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, you know, talking down about. Um, you know the okay. Indian gurus. I'm not trying to. You know, but anyways, you know. So so you know, it's like well, you got to have this type of incense, and then you drink this kind of tea, and then. You do this kind of meditation and then you wear this type of garment, you know, and, and stuff like that, even though he may not even be saying you should do that. Yeah. Right. He yeah. might be telling you, don't be buying all this material stuff to try and, yeah. you know, create this appearance that you're holy or whatever. But people will still do it anyways. That's the yeah. crazy part. Yeah. Well, it's right? like Scott Adams would take that simultaneous sip. He knows a little bit. He's a little yeah. bit more in on the joke than a lot. Of, you know, he knows. Yeah. Have you ever yeah. seen Scott Adams show? He'd start with the oh, yes. oh, yeah, simultaneous yeah, yeah, yeah. sip where he says, now it's yeah. time for our morning. I don't know if he still does that, but he was really he effective <laughs> in building yeah. his ritual with his audience, yeah. right? To say, yeah. hey, we're buddies. Do yeah. this in remembrance of me. Let's go. Right. And you drink, yep. right? It's yep. all Christ haunted, all cultic, you yep. know? All yep. cults and paganism is all rooted in, you know, some dim grasping at Christianity as yeah. Christianity is reality. Right. And, uh, so therefore, you know, you can see these little types forming all around us, right? And yeah. I, you know, but see, I always wanted to cut against it and say, well, they're all giving you, because a lot of the format of most shows is scandal mm -hmm. or problem or or um, another word would be challenge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you watch uh, a news show or a culture show or a, uh, science bro show and they're going to mm -hmm. give you scandal challenge or you know some kind of um uh problem right mm -hmm. problem has occurred mm -hmm. or a scandal is unfolding that's very oh my goodness or there's a mm -hmm. challenge like uh to overcome something to solve mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. all those things are generally close to one another you know mm -hmm. you watch a newscast there's a scandal trump could go to prison Oh, wow. What's mm -hmm. going to happen? Then you hit to a commercial. So you're a little bit anxious, whether you like him or not. You're kind of the anxious. What's going to happen? Boom. Mm -hmm. We cut to commercial and oh, it's a car. Oh, mm -hmm. that'd be so nice to have that car and to look like those yeah. people driving that car and that car. Yeah. That's the pathetic thing, right? Yeah. And it's like, and then you go back to more, more anxiety, more anxiety. Now, some shows are not quite as anxious driven, but mm -hmm. they still have more like a challenge, like, uh, Hey, uh, this, uh, our bodies are, you know, you, you know, I, I see a lot of the health and wellness world and it's all about how mm -hmm. toxic and destructive the world is. So mm -hmm. that creates anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then they say, go click this link to get my, you know, 15% off on this mm -hmm. hair product or this thing like that. So that mm -hmm. anxiety from the mind mm -hmm. discharges into incarnational action. I click, mm -hmm. I boom, dopamine mm -hmm. hit product mm -hmm. in my hand. 
-hmm. this will help me in some way mm -hmm. get closer to that ecstatic truth of wholeness yeah. and health and at one yeah. or whatever. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> And what and what and see all of that is sort of a desire for being, isn't it? Right, like right. you know, we we want a desire for being, we want a desire to belong to a community, to some someone. And I don't, you know, at face like face value or whatever, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's it's it, but it's the way in which it's used, just like anything. You know what I mean? We talk about nuclear yeah. stuff. We talk about science and and, and, and and chemicals and stuff, right? They can, you know, our political machinations, yeah. you know, it's a it, it can be a double-edged sword, yeah. right? And that's what Christianity sort of exposes, right? Like I exposed to you the scapegoat mechanism. I exposed to you about your desires. Yeah. So now you have to choose which side, you know, which one you will choose, you know? Yeah. And that's a hard, that's a, it's a tempting, it's tempting to go in the other direction. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I, I told, you know, we were talking, I was talking with uh, Craig Stewart. And, you know, the last thing we said is that, you know, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, you know? And so, yes, like you can, I think you can harness like, you know, this, this excitement for belonging to a community. So for the, as long as it's healthy. And Not I just think belonging in community, but having something yeah. tangible to act upon and to act yeah. with, right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't, because. Because that's what yeah. all good, you know, like churches and things do. They have something, yeah. not just ritual, but things you touch or mm -hmm. smell or have mm -hmm. an experience with, right? right? And sensorially, right? And yeah. um, that's what's important for like having, you know, that that kind of, again, I call it like an incarnational discharge of the energy mm -hmm. of the mind or the spirit or the soul, mm -hmm. consciousness. Exp oh, wow, there's a war. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. I got to buy this survival kit from this conspiracy mm -hmm. show. And mm -hmm. it sounds, you know, dirty on one hand, because oftentimes mm -hmm. it is dirty in the way yeah. in which people do these things. They whip you mm -hmm. up so much mm -hmm. in that experience. And it makes you wonder how can you redeem that? How can we do redemptive media that, that does not try to reject it all? Because what mm -hmm. I have tried to do on this show is to say, okay, I'm not going to give you just a problem. I'm not mm -hmm. going to say today we have Armageddon approaching and the new world order is getting one step closer. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. And I don't need to do the leftist thing saying our democracy is at stake. Yeah. Oh my God. So stressful. You know, the mm -hmm. planet's going to blow up mm -hmm. all these horrific traumatic things hitting your head mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. most of these shows just leave you with all of that. And then mm -hmm. the only hope is the advertisement or the promo code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what I find that to be very unethical. And that might make me very uh, not good at growing a media business because mm -hmm. it's not the manipulative psychological move that seems to be so effective for humans, because mm -hmm. I want to give you solution within the content itself, mm -hmm. not just where I would advertise. I want to give you yeah. so I, a lot of the things up my greatest, some of my greatest hits from back in radio days every day. I'd tell mm -hmm. people, you know, uh, breathe in the fresh air of freedom together. You know, I mm -hmm. say I would do that live on radio as a little ritual for fun, you know, mm -hmm. you know, breathe in, you know, get your fresh air, get your breathing right, which Diamond mm -hmm. Dallas Page came on my show years later and said, breathing so important to solving 90% of your mental problems. Mm -hmm. Breathing correctly, taking the time to deeply breathe, mm -hmm. get you out of the fight or flight response. That's scientifically mm -hmm. validated. But another mm -hmm. thing is stay out of debt. If you're in debt, get rid of the debt. If you got credit yeah. cards, chop them up. Stay away yeah. from them. If yeah. you got, you know, if you got, you know, uh, you know, you got seed oils in your pantry, take them out. You know, yeah. uh, if, if you, you know, got kids in a failing government school, try to homeschool them if you can. Do whatever you can yeah. to do that. Uh, yeah. you know, I try to give people, you know, takeaway points. Yeah. But still, because it's not something that, because when I say that, you still can't touch it. Yeah. Right. You can't. Yeah. You can't interact with me saying that. When I say, get the seed oils out of your life, stay out of debt. I don't hit to a commercial that says, "Here's your bankruptcy lawyer. Call him yeah. today. He'll help you file and get this credit off your back." Right. Yeah. I, that's the <laughs> incarnational move, I guess, that a lot of people make a lot of success in media doing. Yeah. And if I said, get your seed oils out of the way, and then boom, hit to a commercial and. I'm advertising seed oil busters. They'll bust into your kitchen if you hire them and they clean your whole pantry out of everything. Seed oil. That's probably a good business. Somebody, yeah, that's a, yeah. Somebody's doing it right now after I said that. 
like, <laughs> like a lot of things I've talked about on this show. I'm getting used to that. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Imitated, never, never usually uh, uh, credited. But, um, You're right. Um, but the point is, is that I think there's a way in which you don't have to, you know, you don't have to throw out. People want that tangible product. You don't have yeah. to say, well, therefore it's dirty if I do that. No, you can do it yeah. right, but it may be yeah. really hard to do it right. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, take, take, for instance, our, one of our favorite, one of our favorite beloved, you know, uh, authors, right. Writers, Rene Girard, right. He, he, even he, even he knew, even he knew that I got a publisher or perish. Yeah. So you had to he sell a book. He yeah. said that. He said it. He said it. I have a book. Yeah. <laughs> so so he said, look, if I'm gonna get these ideas out there and I want people to listen to hear what I have to say, oh, yeah. write these books, and then what do the books do? <laughs> Some of them books, I'll tell you, man, even the cover, right? Because they're hard covers, hard copies, like old vintage ones, have you know, I'm sure those will become in 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 years probably not that far away, will become like you know cherishable items like you want to hold on to because you're like man this was this was published back in when he first wrote this book you see what i'm saying every pe people who are gerardians they love to you know they love to collectors items you know what i'm saying and and you know what i'm saying is they they like to digest his material yeah. and so they're you know they, they, they buy the books they they listen to the podcast they you know, they, they, you know, so when you're really into something, you know, you do want to engage with it. You want to have some kind of tangible, something that is, is connected to. I, I think that's just, um, I think that that's like a, you know, again, it's, 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 it's like a mimetic thing. You know, you, you want to be connected to, to a community and, and, and tan tangibility gives you that connection. You yeah. know what I mean? It's even if, even if you see somebody like, with a bumper sticker, you know, you say, okay, well, they got the bumper sticker of, uh, you know, I don't know. Okay. You say Alex Jones, you know what I'm saying? They find somebody who's like-minded, right? It might honk their horn, Alex Jones, Alex Jones. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, oh, you know, hey, they're, meet, fi they're meet. fishing, they're fishing for community, aren't they? Yeah. They got their fishing. line in the water of their yeah. local cities. Yeah. They're waiting for that excitement when they get a, a honk back. Right. Right. Or you or you, you know, or like, a, you know, your, your favorite, uh, you know, you went to college. Right. I, you know, OK, I went to the University of Washington. So, you know, what do you do? You know, you want to you want to you want to have little things like the Huskies. You know, I got a sweater. I got a cardigan. I got a hat. I got a keychain. you know, whatever. You know what I mean? I go to the games every. Every fall, you know, winter, I don't know. You know what I mean? I watch the the crew team in the summertime, roll their boats, you know, you, you, you want to be a part of it. So it's, you know, I, I do, I do think that that's important. And uh, I mm -hmm. think it's just, again, you know, where, where it leads to, like, is it for the glory of God or is it for a cult of personality? Right. Or uh, selling or, $50 uh, prayer cloths that have been yeah. <laughs> yeah. sprayed Lysol on them to make hey, it. Man. That's funny that you brought that up. Cause there, I remember there used to be a black preacher, on t he he would come on at like really early, and I mean early like two three in the morning, okay. That costs and, a lot of money know. to buy that block of time, man. You had to get <laughs> you know you get what's available. Man, he'd be on there, and he'd be talking about, uh, thank you, thank you, Jesus. We got we got this uh you know this 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 flare handkerchief, and if you buy it now, hmm. God will heal you. Don't you feel that? And so he's talking, you know, these people are calling in and they're that buying now this is, That's not the Holy Ghost. That's cortisol because he's got to make sure he can pay that time block back. You know what I mean? That's, you say, nah, help. 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 Yeah. That's a cry out to God in a different way. You know, Lord, help this work. You know what I mean? I got to make this payment or I'm not going to be able to keep being on. I'm going to get shut up to him. <laughs> That's like, so, that yeah. is an ex it is a kind of existential cry out to God. You yes, know, like, it, Lord, yes, I'm, I took a loan. I bought this time on TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got to pay, oh, pay payroll. <laughs> we got to make payroll. We got this producer that wants so much money for the cameras. 
Now, that now comes out with every <laughs> every. Fight. I can't even afford a. I can't even afford a sandwich, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, hey, you know, you gotta get it. You gotta, you gotta, you yeah. know, you gotta get it. How you get it? You know, that's 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 what's all going. You know, we talked about Sukihana and everything. Look, yeah. what I'm saying, you know what I'm yeah. saying. She, what is she? Doing? Well, those, you know, the live streamer format, which has been very popular for a lot of big people. You know, people becoming very popular in the Gen Z world. You know, because they mm -hmm. play video games, right? Well, it's so right. interesting, you know, they watched people playing video games. It's an interactive mm -hmm. experience, Rem reminiscent of, like, when you're a kid and your older brothers or whatever are playing a game and you sit and watch them, you know, as they mm -hmm. go. And yeah, uh, and that's a communal experience. And then that kind of uh, helps evolve into their interest in these live streamers. And then you see it, you see they're doing the same thing as the televangelists where, you know, mm -hmm. they have their, you know, you pay a certain amount of money to have your mm -hmm. question or comment read live on the show with all those people so yeah. that's their little prayer cloth you know yeah you come that's on it, now if you if, if you come in with fifty dollars you get to have yeah. your message read if you come yeah, in with ten dollars yeah. we just show right. it real fast and close it we don't read right. you know right you know right. that's the same televangelist can i get another 50 yeah because <laughs> i gotta fly all these instagram people we put on this panel back home <laughs> i got airfare tickets to pay can we get some more 50 you know 50 questions it's Man, some of them will stop their show <laughs> and wait. That's what those televangelists did. That's what uh, uh, Scott used to do. That uh, <laughs> uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, Scott, um, the televangelist that does uh, uh -huh. God's Angry Man. That uh, Werner Herzog made a movie about him. Uh -huh. His name was uh, Gene Scott. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. He's yeah, the, the one that had the monkeys, monkeys and everything. <laughs> Yeah, they were, they were doing the little with the with the with the, with the, symbol, with the symbols and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, and, and hey, he man. would and he would yell at his audience. He would say, "The FCC is trying to take us down. Yeah, we're not going anywhere until you help us. <laughs> Pick up the phone and call us now." And he would just sit there and smoke a cigarette on the on this live stream like he was protesting. His own audience, you know, right, right. Play the monkeys, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. That's you know, it's it's a, uh, you know, I mean, I think it boils down to a question of, <clears throat> you know, what, what what are you really doing it for? Yeah, you know what I mean, and 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 um, and being authentic, right? Like really wanting to put put products out there and sell things that you know, whether whether they're attached to, you know your 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 uh you know media or whether it's something else you know people should always be 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 you know take good care of what it is they're trying to put out you know what i mean it's about good being a good steward and a good craftsman you know and that takes um sometimes that takes a lot of work you know but i think in the end it's worth it you know yeah See their dignified monkey salute tonight. They think they're going to stop us from an appeal by compressing us to 14 days. I want you to know if it's 14 hours, we can still do it and we'll win. They better give them their monkey salute. The only thing they'll ever accomplish around here is make this kind of noise. Turn them all on. Give me some monkey farm, the FCC monkey band, monkey farm music. I'll fly away. Let them go. Look at them. Here's your bureaucrat. Wouldn't you like to grow up and be a bureaucrat if you're a kid watching? FCC monkey band. Get it back there on old Blabby back there. He's already talking to the press. I'm surprised he didn't try and sell those. He should have sold those. Of the people, nothing. What's this guy turned here? What's this guy turned here? Mark of the beast <laughs> six times. One, watch it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Over he goes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Over he goes. Get the old talky one back there. Kind of fence and bang him on the floor like you 
on the head and let him turn him, bang his head on the floor. That's right. That's the only way to treat a bureaucrat. <laughs> Hit him again. <laughs> Actually, I gotta tell you, man, he his aesthetic is mm. And his style is way better than like any of the streamers today. Yeah. That that whole thing. And and I and I was impressed by the quality and the craftsmanship of those monkey toys. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you can't get toys made that nice with the fur and the mechanics and the novelty and the textures and the Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so cheap and flimsy most of the time, unless you spend like a fortune on some high end thing, but yeah, I mean, he's got monkeys doing every kind of gyration, vibration, hitting of the face, every instrument, every every kind of uh, exercise <laughs> known to man. Yeah, that's back in that day. I mean, that's pretty impressive. But <laughs> I mean, there's a there's art even in that. You know, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Actually, he inspired a lot of uh, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Even uh, Paul Heyman. Mm -hmm. Paul Heyman, a famous. Uh, wrestling managers inspired by gene scott pastor gene scott and his broadcast mm -hmm. but, how, how how uh how how would you say he was a uh, um because I don't, I don't i don't know him but uh would you say he was like, like a watch the movie god's angry man it's available online okay by Werner herzog yeah. it's about his life. I, I know i know herzog yeah 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 he he makes great documentaries but yeah. <clears throat> would you say uh this minister was like an authentic minister or would you call him like a sort of a televangelist, like Benny, Benny Hinn type TV type? I mean, that's how, I mean, they would probably situate him more in the latter, but uh, mm -hmm. his, his uh, widow is still doing his ministry to this day. She streams it on YouTube instead and she's teaching. Oh, wow. Okay. She did. Yeah. She does all kinds of teachings and so forth. So, so is she selling monkeys now? I don't know. We got to see what they're selling. They they probably they've been doing it so long. They probably have got it down to a, a well oiled machine by now. What works and doesn't. But yeah, I mean, I just I think it's interesting that you know we we've lost that kind of charismatic aesthetic of mm -hmm. the old media. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we think about those uh, those guys, I mean, there's the layer of ethical advertisement. Mm -hmm but an ethical, you know, using use of your show and relationship mm -hmm. to discharge into things that people want to buy. Can you do mm -hmm. that in a way that doesn't manipulate? But then you have the, the issue of uh, aesthetics, which mm -hmm. I think we're lacking here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, maybe that's because people are so worried about their income that they don't have time to really think about the aesthetics. You know what I'm saying? Cause it'd be like, you know, it, it, hell, if I, if I get cut off air, all this stuff is sitting with me and I, and I can't, you know, now I'm in debt. But it's a, it's a, it's an infinite feedback loop, right? Because mm -hmm. the more you dis create despairing aesthetics, the more, mm -hmm. you know, it, it feeds into the society's decay, which mm -hmm. feeds into your difficulty earning a living without selling your soul. Mm -hmm. so it just mm -hmm. goes back and forth. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, it's, well, it's, I don't have time to care for aesthetics. So I'm going to take the yeah. cheat way out. And that kind of fills into your mm -hmm. compromising, which feeds into society's general malaise and disrepair. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's something to be said for <clears throat> being able to make more with less, Yeah, you know, and having that kind of attitude, you know, uh, yeah. what, what can I, what, what qual what what can I make that is quality with less less materials? You know, mm -hmm. and I mean, which is a which is a <clears throat> probably a uh, harder thing to do. You know what I mean? Hard harder thing to like actually make happen because you have to really think about that. It's, it takes a lot of I think probably effort, but um, you know, yeah, you do have to be I think conscious of what you're putting out and if it's actually you know quality and if you're producing things for people to actually hold on to to take with them or you know to be of some kind of uh you know um benefit to them then you know you yeah you want it to be ethical you want it to be you know uh 
you know, just, just, I mean, I guess to, so that it, it so that it, it, um, it's for the, for their good. But see, you what's interesting I mean? is like, it's not just the ethical quality of the work you, of the product you sell them, but also the ethic, what are the ethics and how you get them to that point of wanting to buy? Mm -hmm. Because again, yeah, you're yeah, always blasting true. them into despair and fear and anxiety. And then you trigger mm -hmm. that right into a sales. Space. I find that completely distasteful from a Christian mm -hmm. perspective. Yeah. Because yeah. you're monetizing in a kind of cynical exploitative way. Yeah. That, that fear that you've created. And so I wonder, yeah. Can I, you know, can one find success selling good ethical products and solutions, mm -hmm. but not do it in a way that is built on creating that fear and anxiety discharged into, oh, God, I got to click this and buy this immediately. Can mm -hmm. I still provide my positive, balanced message and it mm -hmm. still result in people wanting to click and make the buy per purchase? Or does the or does putting in the positive solution mm -hmm into your content part of your show actually like going to reduce probably the purchase and success of that advertisement. It probably does. Mm. Unfortunately, you, you know, yeah. See what I mean? What do you think so? Yeah. If you have a show, right. And you spend all the time, anxious, 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 stress, 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 add positive release. Boom. Buy mm. it. Or if you do a show, anxious, stress, positive, positive, anxious, stress, positive solution, solution, empowerment mm. you know empowerment mm. empowerment fear you know because i don't always just say positive i also talk about this the negative mm. positive negative positive you know you're you're kind of balanced and then you go to okay try this thing mm -hmm. does that give you this the excitable state you know mm. that is going to create that similar level of purchase and yeah fun. see what i mean that's yeah. an interesting thing to think about yeah i mean it, it is i mean it, to to you know Seeing, you know, them all do it, like you think about, you know, the world is ending by the, I mean, I, you know, it's like you watch, you, you don't even have to listen to people, you know, yeah. it's not just podcasts, like it's, it's news, you know, websites, you know what I mean? You go to like Breitbart, New York Post, whatever, and they've got, you know, they got like ads in there about, you know, buy this, uh, you know, like you know those like when uh, they had the Y two K stuff, you know what I mean? Like buy buy this survival yeah. kit yeah. and all this type of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I think what it does is just sort of reinforces, you know, it reinforces. Uh, but if you're you putting know, solution positivity counterbalances within your content, and then you yeah. go to a product, it may yeah. not create the same kind of level of. Of of, yeah, of like incarnational a, discharge because you're going to be you've already kind of met some of that anxiousness. Like if you say, yeah. "Folks, here's the scary things. What's going on here is crazy. Oh my goodness, can you see this corruption? Do you see what's going on? We're going to have this or that." But then you mm -hmm. also provide, "Well, here's things you can do to empower yourself. Here's things you can do to keep positive. Here's some good news going on." If you do all that, and then you go to, "Okay, and here's what we're selling you today," mm -hmm. does that not seemingly remove the effect of it? Yeah, most people do it the the way I'm the way I'm describing. They they hit mm -hmm. you with it, and because they don't give you any solutions, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. they don't yeah. give you any solutions. And then people, you know, like Dave Ramsey talks about not getting in debt, but he's got a hundred different solutions for you. He's got, yeah. you know, my book for this, my financial plan, my five step yeah. guide, my book, my real yeah. estate. You know, he's got you know he's got all yeah. kinds of outlets for his, which is fine, but I guess in theory, you know. I mean, but it but it also makes you question if what he's saying is actually really authentic and and, and actually working. If yeah. you have to continuously put out monetary books, you know, yeah. so monetary solutionary books, right. you know what I mean? It's like but that's okay, what I mean, people. But that's I mean, what linear, I mean, linear minded types of people kind of like that. Okay, just tell me X, Y, and Z. Don't just tell me to stay out of debt. I I don't have that. I don't have little picture book guide to teach you. Yeah. I just say, stay out of debt. I expect yeah. you to figure that out on your own. But the average yeah. person, they want to X, Y, Z. They want yeah. step one, step two, step three. They want, yeah. you know, uh, five principles, yeah. four values, three commitments, two yeah. promises in a book. They like yeah. that or a video, you know? Yeah. And yeah. they want to feel like they're a part of it. Hey, honey, let's watch this DVD. It's got five commitments. 
mm-hmm. two values, seven principles, 18 steps, and we're on step two. Let's watch this DVD now. We're going to figure out how to get to step three and four and five. They, yeah. they, people like that. Again, it goes back to that ritual, right? Mm-hmm. People like mm-hmm. rituals. They like tangibility. Mm-hmm. They like something that they can own. It's a left hemisphere brain part of our side. Mm-hmm. We like to grasp and contain and control, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, mm-hmm. you know, we like our entertainment, you know, to be amusement mm-hmm. versus recreation. I heard that from mm-hmm. Pastor Jim Fitzgerald once, the difference between amusement and recreation. Mm-hmm. Amusement, look at the word, ah, without muse, thought, mm-hmm. without thought, mm-hmm. escaping <laughs> thought. Mm-hmm. Look at recreation, that's recreation, re-participate, participating in the act of creation with God. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's a difference between recreational entertainment and recreational experiences and amusement. Yeah. Right? And so much yeah. of our media is geared towards amusement rather than recreation. Mm-hmm. That's a mm-hmm. that's a broader way to look at the differences between content which is designed to glorify God by inspiring people to participate in the creative process themselves mm-hmm. versus content that is meant to make you check out from thinking and feel helpless until you get their product or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean I think that's a that's a valid point, man. Yeah. You know. That's a valid point. Well, Shannon, I appreciate your time, and I want people to check out your website, brightnews.com, yeah. and you've got some interesting podcasts coming out soon. Um, yeah, yeah. YouTube? Anything else yeah, you want to share? I know. That's, you know, just just stay tuned, and we got some, you know, interesting guests coming on, talking about some very interesting things. So, yeah. you know, please, please, you know, stop on by, subscribe, share, yeah. like. And Shannon has no. a prayer cloth that he's thinking about buying from <laughs> Alibaba no. right now, right? 5,000 prayer cloths from us. Yeah, I'm going to go get them from the Himalayans, from the, you know, from Tibet. I'm picking them up right now, you know. All right, take care. <laughs> All right, man, you too. <laughs>